Okay. Thank you, audience. It's time for infectious disease trivia. I will be scoring each of you with this, uh, so we will see who. Let's make it more competitive. Who who wins the uh, competition? So uh, I've picked a car, a literal cornucopia of infectious disease knowledge from all fields, all disciplines within our specialty. So uh, let's start the first question, please. The number of people who die annually from an infectious disease in the U.S. is is it A, 40,000, B, 160,000, C, 1 million, or D, 2 million? And uh, our, our fellow Tron is picking B. Yuli, what do you select? Okay, so we have uh, a B and a C. The correct answer is B. Over 160,000 people in the United States die yearly with an infectious disease as the underlying cause of health. So we have, uh, I, will, I will mark our, our scores. So uh, our fellow Tron is in the lead here. Congratulations, Tron. But there's plenty of questions to make it back, Yuli. Okay, uh, question two, name that fungus. Is it A. Aspergillus, B. Fusarium, C. Zygomyces, or D. Penicillium? Yuli, what's your answer? Okay. Trun? Aspergillus? The correct answer is, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the correct answer is actually Aspergillus. Of course, you knew that because on the left there, you see the Canidia are very distinctive. They remind you of the Aspergillium that, uh, uh, that was the source uh, from which the, that is the, uh, the water tossing device carried by uh, uh, priests in the Catholic face, faith rather, that uh, led to the, uh, the name Aspergillium and uh, Aspergillus rather. And then you see on the right hand side here you see the, the, what are the distinguishing marks of, of, uh, of the morphology here that led you to believe it was Aspergillus. The uh, septated hyphae branching at 45 degree angles. Very good. Now, I should mention some of these were, were tailored for a wide variety of the audience, and I have very astute and seasoned clinicians, so this was probably very easy to them. All right, let's move forward here. Okay, now, now we're getting a little harder. Okay? What titan of infectious disease used this instrument in his work? This is from the historical facet of infectious disease. Was it A, Robert Koch? B. Joseph Lister. C. Louis Pasteur. Or D. Sir William Osler. Okay, now I know uh, Dr. Heinzel knows this. So, what was Robert Koch known for, Tron? Yuli? So, he was the uh, great, uh, I believe, German uh, scientist known for his Koch's postulates. Uh, the uh, the steps necessary in the identification of an organism. Do I have that right, uh, Fred? Okay. Uh, Joseph Lister, what was he known for? Right, so he was known as the father of antisepsis. Louis Pasteur, pasteurization, and uh, what else, Fred? vaccination, uh, his uh, steps towards vaccination uh, and immunization, and Sir William Osler, of course, not necessarily a titan of infectious disease, a titan of medicine, but nevertheless who had much to say about uh, the diagnosis of infectious disease syndromes like endocarditis. Okay. Okay, so now that we have an identification of all the choices, uh, Yuli, what is your selection? So you are picking C, Louis Pasteur. Okay, and Trun, your answer. Also picking Louis Pasteur. Well, that is a uh, that's a good answer. And uh, Fred is picking B, Joseph Lister. And you would be correct. The correct answer is B, J 
Joseph Lister. Lister, of course, the father of antisepsis for whom Listerine was named, used a steam spray such as this one to spray the air in his operating theater with carbolic acid. As a matter of fact, he was known to say what uh, pithy quotation before surgery. People, would, people used to say, let us pray before surgery. He would instead say, let us spray. Very good. So the correct answer is B. And uh, this was between the 1870s and the 1890s. Okay, so neither of you got that one. But Fred got it. Fred is, let me put Fred up here, so. So Fred, you, I think you're in the lead, Fred. I think you got, it's two, it's two, to, two to one. Okay, name this RNA virus's favorite non-terrestrial host. To answer this question, you have to know the virus and then know what its non-terrestrial favorite host is. So what are we looking at here? So rabies, do we have an agreement? Okay, so, and what is this, oh, actually Morella has joined us. So uh, name this RNA virus's favorite terrestrial, non-terrestrial host. What is this virus? Okay, we've had, uh, we've had uh, a, somebody's, two of us have selected rabies. Fred, do you agree? Okay. So what is its favorite non-terrestrial host? Fred, you know this because I was making the slide. Uh, that's right. Okay, so. I'm, I'm getting at the bat, okay? So, all right. So uh, I think both of you got that, so I'm going to give you credit. All right. Very good. But I believe uh, Fred is, Fred, I think, got this one too. So it's Fred. Tron is in second. You in third. Okay, again, now this is totally easy for all of you, so uh, name this gram-negative, catalase-positive, oxidase-positive, lactose-negative, aerobic rod that produces pyocyanin. Okay, is it E. coli, acinetobacter, haemophilus, pseudomonas? Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas. That is correct. The correct answer is pseudomonas. Now, what is pyocyanin, and what is, how is it important to pseudomonas? What's that? Pyocyanin is the blue-green pigment that gives pseudomonas infections its characteristic color. That I, I, I was not able to uncover that, but that is a good question. So for the future, so does pyocyanin, the question was, does pyocyanin have any other role in the pathogenicity or, uh, or um, the ability of pseudomonas to thrive in a, in a host? And uh, that is a question uh, that, that we will answer at a later date. The worst pandemic in the history of mankind is was it A, the plague of Athens, B, the Black Death, C, SARS, D, the Spanish flu, or E, smallpox? Spanish flu? <laughs> okay, we have we have agreement there, the Spanish flu. All right. The correct answer, of course, is, well, let's look at it, okay? The plague of Athens occurred in 430 BC and now is believed to involve typhoid, uh, killed uh, thousands of people. Of course, uh, back then, the population of Athens was quite small, but it was estimated it decimated like half of the population. The Black Death occurred in the 1300s, estimated uh, 75 million dead in Europe, uh, decimated the population in, in Britain, for example, in England, it was estimated that 50% of people died. The grand total was 75 million. SARS, of course, in 2003, the coronavirus, 800 dead. Did, I mean, created a lot of, uh, of, of a scare in a world that had more than 4 billion people um, affected many different cities, including those in North America, like Toronto, but only 800 dead. 
I think the case fatality rate was about approximately 10 percent. Spanish flu, 1918 19, 19, worldwide, 50 to 100 million. Smallpox, however, takes the cake. It's estimated in the 20th century that it, it killed, uh, actually, that's in error, 300 to 500 million. So uh, smallpox is the worst pandemic in the history of mankind, uh, with Spanish flu actually being a close second. But uh, the Black Death certainly is right up there. So remember, smallpox is the worst pandemic of mankind. So the answer is smallpox. All of you missed that. The most common contagious disease is, is it mycobacterium tuberculosis? The common cold spread by rhinovirus, influenza virus, or human papillomavirus. This is a toughie. So Trent says rhinovirus. Yuli? Everybody says rhinovirus. Fred, are you going to disagree? What are you saying? <laughs> Everyone says rhinovirus. The correct answer is indeed human rhino rhinovirus, or the common cold, I should say. The common cold is the most frequent infectious disease in humans, with an average two to four infections a year in individual adults and up to six to 12 in individual children. Remember, the common cold is, not, is caused not just by rhinoviruses, but also by some coronaviruses. And of course, I, I'm sure I have the common cold now, I'm feeling kind of icky, so. Okay, the most successful parasite in humans. Is it A, Trichurus trichura? B, Strongyloides stercoralis? C, Ascaris lumbricoides? Or D, Enter Enterobius vermicularis? So, Trichurus trichura is the, also known as the what? The whipworm. Okay, Strongyloides stercoralis. Of course, we know the the uh, parasite that uh, is associated with uh, persistence in humans. And uh, Ascaris lumbricoides, the common roundworm, right? Enterobius vermicularis, also known as the pinworm. So what is the most successful parasite in humans? Trun. Strongyloides. I mean, yeah, by successful I mean uh, the widely, most widely prevalent. Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, Fred? Enterobius vermicularis, the pinworm. Yeah, everybody get out your scotch tape. The correct answer is this organism. This is Ascaris lumbricoides. So um, it affects approximately 25% of the human population. And victims are usually infected with up to 20 worms. Of course, uh, we know about the pulmonary syndromes, Loeffler syndrome with uh, Ascaris. And it has an estimated penetration of 1 billion people worldwide. Each female worm produces approximately 200,000 eggs per day, um, 27 million eggs during its lifespan. So uh, the answer is Ascaris lumbricoides. Yeah, and we all see the, uh, we've all seen the famous uh, parasitic uh, uh, sort of uh, picture of the child who passes like, uh, you know, a few dozen worms, and uh, and so they have uh, round worms uh, exiting their 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 hind parts, and uh, of course this is the the, the when you see. Uh, this picture, you have to remember, of course, that, that uh, Ascaris is the, the roundworm, the largest of the roundworms. So if you see a, a, uh, someone passes a worm in their stool, typically that's very visible. It's, it's of course, the Ascaris roundworm. So who is related to this structure? Paul Ehrlich. Is it John Snow? Is it Sir Alexander Fleming? Or is it Jonas Salk? Trun. John Snow. <laughs> See, you all know this because I, 
you, I passed around these pictures uh, earlier last fall. So of course this is, so who is Paul Ehrlich? Let's go through and, and make sure we remember all the titans of infectious disease. I think that was a different Ehrlich, actually. Paul Ehrlich, as I recall, is an entomologist and, and uh, American scientist who wrote, um, I think he wrote the, the um, book, the, t the Population Bomb. Do you remember that? Uh, mm, am I? I think there are several Ehrlichs. May, perhaps the Ehrlich I'm talking about is a more recent vintage. Maybe I maybe I meant to refer to the ancient, to the Ehrlich of the 1900s. So, uh, anyone who's keeping score at home, you can you can send me a protest about this question. Sir Alexander Fleming, of course, is the father of penicillin, right? So he is known for his discovery of penicillin, and Jonas Salk invented the first the polio vaccine, the first effective polio vaccine, right? And uh, um, so this is the monument uh, dedicated to John Snow, who of course is known as the father of epidemiology because he was able to have an association with a well pump and its use and cholera in London in the 19th century. And if you go to this area today, they have this monument dedicated to him, uh, John Snow. And the, st the structure in the distance is the John Snow Pub. <laughs> the irony here, of course, is he was a huge uh, uh, he is a huge believer in uh, the temperance movement, and was an avowed uh, avowedly opposed to alcohol consumption, but nevertheless. Uh, they named a pub in his honor, and you can go in the John Snow pub to this day. So again, a, John Snow was a British physician and leader in the adoption of anesthesia and medical hygiene, and uh, he was uh, a, a great force in uh, curtailing this major cholera outbreak in London. Now, if you read more about this, actually, the, the cholera outbreak was already starting to quell at that point, but because he made this great association with the pump, the Broad Street Pump, he is still recognized for his contributions. Okay, so Paul Ehrlich, there are two Paul Ehrlichs. The one I was thinking of was born in 1854, a German immunologist. And his contribution was that basically uh, staining for the microscopic tissue substances is able to identify TB. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I remember him because he was a, a chemist and he was. So there's two Paul Ehrlichs. This is the earlier Paul Ehrlich. Everybody scoring at home, please uh, make note of that. <laughs> I'm doing <it> <laughs> yeah. uh, Where and when was the deadliest E. coli foodborne disease outbreak? Okay, was it Mexico City, 1996? New Orleans, 2005? United Kingdom, 1998? Or the Haley VA Cafeteria, 2010? Okay, Tron. You're saying D. <laughs> it's probably true. You heard about that, actually. <laughs> Yuli. United Kingdom, 1998. Morella. New Orleans, 2005. You know, that was during Hurricane Katrina. Maybe perhaps it could have been. The correct answer is actually, and this is still the case even after all these years. It, the correct answer is 1998. Uh, that would be uh, United Kingdom, 1998. 20 people died and 500 became ill after consuming meat contaminated by E. coli 157, uh, bought at a butcher shop in Scotland. And uh, again, this is still the deadliest E. coli outbreak now even 12 to 13 years later. So it emphasizes the importance of uh, of making sure that your meat products are pure and also the fact that uh, E. coli um, 0157 can contaminate um, meat products from a butcher. This is from the, uh, the Guinness Book of World Records. And uh, just remember that there are uh, 
that 0157 is uh, one of many potential pathogens associated with ground beef. Okay, uh, name that tick species. Okay, well, we all got that right away. So this is Amblyoma americanum. All right, now you all are thinking you're smart, right? Okay, and you all are very smart, but you think you're good at trivia. Oh. Now, try this. Amblyoma ticks spread all except A, ehrlichiosis, B, Lyme disease, C, starry, D, tularemia, or E, all of the above. Trun. All right, so what are you saying? So all except Lyme disease B. Yuli. Lyme disease B. Morella. Okay. All right. Now, the, the correct answer is, is actually E, and I'll tell you why. Because amblyoma, in rare cases, can carry Lyme disease. So we are working here on a technical point, but nevertheless, it can still carry Lyme disease in rare cases, even though it inactivates it. So again, I think uh, let's we'll, we'll have to contact the Guinness Book of World Records here, and, and you can uh, you can uh, uh, write your protest for this question. We may have to throw this one out. Okay, worldwide, the single greatest infectious disease killer is is it A? human immunodeficiency virus, B, mycobacterium tuberculosis, C, malaria, or D, pandemic flu? Trun. So you're going with B. Yuli? Morella? Fred? <laughs> Current. They got big fights over who which one actually killed more people. Uh, malaria kills more children than TB, but I think TB still is top of the list. Now, you throw in HIV and TB together, that there's an unholy synergy. Right. That's, that's the, the biggest epidemic right now. Okay. Well, I chose my terminology very careful here. I, I put uh, the single greatest infectious disease killer, and I'll tell you why. Um, so the, the, the answer is HIV. And uh, so excuse my bad formatting here, but when you look at the leading infectious diseases causes of death, and yes, I realize this is 2002, and the data is, is uh, eight years old, and a lot changes in, in almost a decade, but respiratory infections actually uh, together kill more people than any other infectious disease causes of death. But when you talk about single infectious disease causes of death, the, the winner is HIV AIDS. And based on everything I was able to find, that has not changed here in 2010. So the correct answer is HIV AIDS. Tuberculosis is four, malaria is five, and you'd think they, they kill a lot of people, but actually diarrheal diseases, again, agglomerated together, take the number three spot. So amaze your friends at your next party with this useless information. And you can see this is the latest slide. Adults and children estimated be, to be living with HIV. Uh, and we all know that Sub-Saharan Africa has more cases than any other place in the world combined. That is still the case. Newly infected, again, same thing. Sub-Saharan Africa, 1.9 million. And the countries with the highest HIV AIDS prevalence, we know that, uh, the, that almost all of them are in Sub-Saharan Africa. The country with the inf highest infectious disease rate is A, Haiti, B, Afghanistan. Now keep in mind, this is rate. C, Seo, Tome, and Principe. D, Russia. Trun. Seo, Tome, and Principe. And, and where are they? <laughs> Yuli. You're saying D? Haiti. Okay, A. Morella. D. 
Russia. Okay? Now, I know Trun is like me. She picks the odd, oddest of the oddballs in the selection. So the correct answer is actually C. Seo Tome and Principe. And don't ask me why, but according to the Guinness Book of World Records online edition, this has the highest number of deaths due to infectious disease, an astounding 241 per 100,000. In comparison, the U.S. had only 65 deaths per 100,000 in 1992. Well, you'd be the uh, uh, visitor's website says it, it is a um, jungle paradise. <laughs> and that may be it. So here's some more information from the... From the WHO fact book, again, this is, uh, uh, again, a, a heavily agricultural uh, type of economy. And there have been, uh, in, at least throughout the 1990s and the early part of the last decade, uh, continual political instability, frequent changes in leadership, and coup attempts. And uh, as a result, that, that is uh, said to be the reason why this has the highest infectious disease rate in terms of causes of death. All right. The most common pediatric cause of death, is it? Oh, I'm sorry. True or false? The most common cause of death in small children is infectious disease. Is that true? Worldwide. True or false? Worldwide. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody's agreeing yes. That is true. In 1998, again, latest I have statistics, the most common cause of death among children was infectious disease, which two-thirds of all death in small children is due to infectious disease. We can see that here. Uh, child mortality in the six World Health Organization regions and of course Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa, leads. And uh, these are leading causes of death in children in developing countries. And you can see that uh, lower respiratory infections, diarrheal diseases, malaria, measles, HIV, AIDS, pertussis, tetanus uh, cause the vast majority of etiologies among the top ten. <laughs> no, there's no autism there. But let's not pick on her. You know, she just broke up with Jim Carrey and everything. It's, she's on the ropes. Okay, Fred, I do not want you to answer this. Xenotrophic urine leukemia related virus has been associated with that's right, XMRV. A patient wrote me about this this very morning and I had to look up this information, so I added it right in there. Is it associated with A, AML, B, prostate cancer, C, chronic fatigue syndrome, D, B, and C, or E, A, and C? Okay, you're going to go with, with D? I'm sorry, so B and C? And Morella, you said C, chronic fatigue syndrome. Wow, you're very astute. The correct answer, and Fred knows this, is D, B, and C. So, uh, Initial reports have detected a marine retrovirus in cancerous prostate tissue, and CFS association has been promoted by researchers at the National Cancer Institute in the Cleveland Clinic. I should emphasize this is all very preliminary, so, but I think, you know, if anyone asks you about XMRV, you'll know. The highest number of cases of Hansen's disease, leprosy, occur in which country? Is it Brazil? Madagascar, Mozambique, or India? Fred, you should know this. What do you guys say? India? India, okay. This is actually a trick question because um, you could argue this in several different ways. Um, the highest total number of cases actually occur in India. There's, uh, in 1999, 577,000. But as terms, in terms of the highest rate of leprosy, it's, it's actually Brazil. So, but the take home message from this is remember, India has an astoundingly high number of cases of leprosy, but they're a very populous country. If you're going to talk about a very an area with high endemicity um, in terms of uh, percentage of the population. The winner is Brazil. So Brazil and India lead the uh, indi individual respective statistics as high areas of leprosy. Fred, any comments about this? No? Okay. 
All right, the most successful immunization program in history was A, poliomyelitis, B, MMR, C, smallpox, D, diphtheria. Trun, what is the most successful immunization program in history? Smallpox. Yuli. Smallpox. Morella. You are correct. Smallpox was the most successful immunization period in history. Following a massive immunization program, WHO declared the world free of smallpox as of January 1st, 1980. In the 1960s, 2 million people died from the disease. And uh, of course, uh, uh, there's always uh, immunization uh, concerns regarding bioterrorism. That was a big a few years ago, perhaps now not as much. And uh, there was a similar attempt, of course, to er how many people have heard about the attempts to eradicate polio worldwide, the polio eradication program. And uh, um, so, uh, and, and this is the, the focus of this question. And uh, so again, uh, I gave this question away, but uh, I, I did want to mention that uh, uh, everything looked really good as of 2001, but ever since then there's been a resurgence of, of uh, poliomyelitis, and it's actually spread to a lot more countries now. Um, there are 25 countries estimated to be involved as of 2010. Uh, two years ago it was looking rosy, there was only 19. Part of the issue is uh, places like Afghanistan, where I understand the Taliban is actually uh, targeted people trying to eradicate polio because they look at it as some sort of uh, plot um, to, to somehow destabilize the population or infiltrate the population. You can see here this is uh, areas of uh, wild polio virus um, as far as countries of the world. Uh, this is the latest statistics. So we'll move on. Edward Jenner was best known for A, rabies vaccine. B, he was an Olympic athlete. Actually, that's Bruce Jenner. Sorry. Uh, C, cause of purple fever. Uh, D, smallpox vaccine. So what was Edward Jenner best known for? D, so the cause of smallpox vaccine. That is actually correct. So Edward Jenner is widely credited as the pioneer of smallpox vaccine and is sometimes referred to as the father of immunology. Any comments about this, Fred? You have a picture of Edward Jenner on, on, your, uh, on your office wall, don't you? Um, I'm going to say Lady Gaga. I'm not sure why, but... Uh, she just, she was the first person that popped in my head. The oldest infectious disease is, is it A, mycobacterium tuberculosis, B, smallpox, C, leprosy, D, syphilis. Leprosy. Fred? It's a, it's a it's definitely a, a point of much debate which of these are the oldest infectious disease but if you believe the Guinness Book of World Records online edition a the leading medical authority in the world by the way <laughs> the correct answer is C leprosy cases of leprosy were described in ancient Egypt as early as 1350 BC making it the oldest known disease in the world TB has also been seen in Egyptian mummies from the 20th dynasty. The plague and cholera are both referred to in the Old Testament and the Bible. So, Okay, which animal is the only one that can be infected by human M. leprae? Now, Fred, I know you know the answer to this. So. Oh, 
sorry, opossum, meerkat, armadillo, or lemur? Arm everyone saying armadillo? Okay. Yes, you are correct. The armadillo is the only animal aside from humans known to carry leprosy. The animal's paws have a temperature which is ideal for the growth of mycobacterium leprae. The disease is transmitted when the armadillo defends itself with its claws. Fred, are, are you familiar with any instances where armadillos have transmitted leprosy to people? Because, you know, they, they eat. Armadillos are eaten. There are some uh, uh, cultures where armadillos are eaten, of course, and uh, and I believe even in the bayous of Louisiana. I know one a, a uh, colleague of mine was telling from Louisiana was telling me how, you know, people in the back country they eat whatever they can find, and armadillos are, are and and it's even theorized that there was kind of a focal hotbed of of uh, mycobacterial infections in uh, in Louisiana, and perhaps one part of that was ingestion of armadillo meat. So, or at least contact with armadillos. Which country has the highest budget for health care? Is it Switzerland, France, United States, or the United Arab Emirates? United Arab Emirates. Tron. I'm sorry? France? So this is the highest, the, the country that spends the highest on health care. It's actually the U.S. According to the World Health Organization, the United States government spent $5,200 per citizen on health care in 2002. So we spend more than, than anyone else. But yet, we are not the top-ranked health care system. In fact, we are far from it. Yes. So thus the, the debate over our health care dollar. That's got to be it. Name three of five drugs listed below that interact with rifampin. A, Emprenovir. B, calcium channel blockers, C, warfarin, D, septra, E, statins. So name three of five drugs that interact with rifampin. So warfarin, C, D, septra, E, statins. So I'm sorry, we have warfarin, statins, what else? Emprenovir? So what we're what the audience is saying is A, C, and E. So may I have the final answer here? What are we saying? A, C, and E. Oh, sorry about that. It was it it, it was supposed to pop up. My apologies. The correct answer is indeed. Amprenivir, warfarin, and um, I believe it's uh, actually Septra, A, C, and D. Yeah, I believe that's the correct answer. Statins and calcium channel blockers do not interact with rifampin. And I, I know we remember our, our uh, program directors talk about this a week or two ago. Were you all there for Dr. Sinnott's talk about? I, I, my guess would be, of course, that... Uh, uh, Statins and calcium channel blockers are metabolized by a different P450 pathway. All right. And if this is our final question, which TV doctor is board certified in infectious diseases? Marcus Welby, John Carter, Gregory House, and Dr. John J.D. Dorian. <laughs> All of you watch uh, House? Okay. See, I, I've never been a House fan, so... I, I'm, a, I'm a garage fan, actually, not a house fan. The correct answer is Gregory House, or C, what's his first name? Gregory House, MD, is, is board certified infectious disease. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much for playing. I totally lost count at the end, so I'm just going to give you all stars. All right, well, have a good weekend.